Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of December 10th, 2019. I am Majority Leader Lori Cumbo. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Adams. Apri Samuel. Ayala. Barron. Borelli. Brannon. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Here. Cohen. Here. Constantinides. Present. Carnegie. Present. Deutsch. Here. Diaz, Drum, Espinal, Eugene, Gibson, Jonai, Present, Grudenchik, Holden, Here, Kalos, Here, King, Ku, Present, Kozlowitz, Lanceman, Lander. Here. Levin. Levine. Here. Lewis. Here. Mizell. Here. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. Present. Moya. Perkins. Present. Powers. Here. Reynoso. Richards. Present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Rose. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Morelli. Here. Valone. Here. Gibson. Here. Ben Bramer. Here. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. We have a quorum and we will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Rabbi Mark Kaiserman of the Reformed Temple of Forest Hills, located at 71-11-112th Street in Forest Hill, Queens. It is a season of giving. Our lives shift towards presence and helping those in need. How sad that January will soon arrive and we will all go back to our selfish existence. May this time of kindness stick with us everywhere we go, when we walk down busy New York streets, when we concern ourselves with the needs of our family, friends, and coworkers, when we consider laws and bills and how we might dispense justice, when we look at each person and treat them as if they were created in the image of God. May the year ahead be a year of blessing, compassion, and caring, not for the presents we might get or simply to reflect the seasons, but for the gifts we can give each day and the season we can create throughout our lives. May we each find the strength and love to make this a better world for everyone, every day, throughout the entire year. Amen. Thank you so much, Rabbi Kaiserman, for that inspirational 2020 invocation. 
I'd now like to call on Council Member Karen Koselwitz to spread the invocation onto the record. Thank you. Rabbi Mark Kaiserman became the rabbi of Reform Temple of Forest Hills in July 2013, returning to his childhood New York City and becoming part of this dynamic synagogue community. During his rabbinic career, Rabbi Kaisman has worked at all ends of the country. He served as the rabbi of Temple Emmanuel in Livingston, New Jersey, as assistant associate rabbi of Temple Emmanuel in Dallas, Texas, and the interim rabbi at Congregation B'nai Tzedek in Fountain Valley, California. Originally from Brooklyn, New York rabbi, Kaiserman received a BA in English Literature and Judaic Studies from Bing, Bing, Binghamton, I'm tired. <laughs> Binghamton University. He earned his MA in Hebrew Letters in 1996 and his rabbinic orientation or, ordination from the Hebrew Union College, Jewish Indus, Institute of Religions Cincinnati campus in 1997. With a childhood love for acting, he has co-written numerous popular, popular Purim spiels for all ages, adapting the music from shows such as The Sound of Music, Grease, Fiddler on the Roof, Disney, and The Wizard of Oz. Interfaith work has been a concentration throughout Rabbi Kaisman's career, serving on the Forest Hills Interfaith Cur Clergy Association. He works regularly with social justice organizations to help us all make a better world. He also is an active volunteer in the Central Conference of American Rabbis and his alma mater, the Hebrew Union College, currently serving on the CCAR Ethics Committee. I just want to say that Rabbi Kaisman is my rabbi, and he is great. And with that, I spread the invocation in full upon the council. Thank you so much, Council Member Koselwitz. What an honor to have your rabbi here today. I think we should all have a moment to speak with him <laughs> to find out some of the Karen Koselwitz tricks. Um, at this time, we'd like to have the adoption of the minutes by Council Member Danny Drum. Thank you. I motion that the minutes of the stated meetings of October 28th and 19, October 28th, 2019, and October 30th, 2019, be adopted as printed. Thank you, Council Member Drum. We will now have messages and papers from the mayor. Excuse me, M196 through M198, various appointments. Rules, privileges, and elections. <clears throat> Communication from city, county, and borough offices? None. Petitions and communications? None. Land use call-ups? None. Thank you, and we will now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon, and I want to thank you all for being here on this important stated day. Last week, as many of, you, many of you know, New York City lost a giant in public service, Jay Kriegel. Jay spent decades serving this city with unmatched vigor and energy. He was a confidant to countless city leaders and devoted his life to making New York City a better place. He impacted city government for six decades, six, 60 years of service to the city that he loved. Many of us here knew Jay Kriegel and we're grateful for his friendship. I was at services last night in Park Slope. I saw Council Members Torres and Lander there and countless individuals who were impacted in a great way because of Jay's service and life. You always saw him coming with that mane of hair. He was energetic and wonderful. I spoke with him about two weeks ago in my last conversation, I asked him how he was, and he told me he didn't want to talk about that, that he had a proposal to save the yellow taxi industry in New York City, and that he wanted to present it to me soon. I will miss Jay. He was a great and amazing man, 25-year-old chief of staff to then Mayor Lindsay, and his impact will be felt for generations. 
a real loss for the city of New York, and I still am in disbelief that Jay is gone. I, I still can't believe that he is not with us anymore. I'd also like to take a moment as we do during each stating meeting, I, I wanna take a moment as we do during each stated meeting to remember the lives of 9-11 first responders who we have lost. Vincent DiMarino, a retired NYPD deputy police chief, passed away from 9-11 related cancer at the age of 61 on December 6th. We remember Deputy Chief DiMarino for his courage in a time of crisis and his lack of hesitation to respond when New Yorkers needed him. My heart and our hearts are with his wife Charlene, his family, and the entire NYPD. I'd also like to acknowledge the loss of an NYPD tow truck operator, Anthony Edgehill, who died on duty last Monday. He was 61 years old and our thoughts are with his family as well. Let us take a moment of silence for these three New Yorkers who served our great city. Thank you. This month is AIDS Awareness Month. This is an opportunity to honor those we have lost to this devastating disease, but it also provides us with an opportunity to celebrate the progress we've made to reduce the number of new HIV and AIDS cases to historic lows. As a council, we will keep fighting to end this epidemic. Last year, we saw the lowest number of new infections ever recorded in the history of the epidemic and as someone living with HIV, I am really grateful to the members of this body who continue to fight to help people living with HIV and AIDS. Before we dive into our legislative agenda, I want to acknowledge that we're joined by a former council member, June Iceland, who we are really happy is here, happy she's here. She served this body for many years with distinction and honor, and she served during the time of the first speaker of the city council, Peter Vallone Sr. Speaker Vallone has been a great role model and advisor to many members of this body. I wish him and his family all the best in this holiday season. We celebrated and surprised him uh, for his birthday. He's turning 21 years old this Friday, and he's turning 85, and he looks magnificent, and we were so grateful uh, that he was here honoring his life and his legacy. Uh, now let's, yes. Now let's dive into our legislative agenda. We'll be voting on the following land use items. 515 Blake Avenue, a series of applications to facilitate the development of approximately 500 affordable units of housing, 50% of which will be affordable to people earning 50% or below of area median income, including 30% of the units for formerly homeless individuals in the Sin Councilmember Barron's district. 101 Fleet Place will provide for the construction of a 14-story commercial building in Majority Leader Lori Cumbo's district, and the council will be restoring the original proposed zoning in order to facilitate the retention of a daycare center in the new development. I want to thank the staff, Rosa Kelly and Brian Paul, for their work on these applications. Moving on, the council will be voting on the following pieces of legislation. First, we have a transportation bill up for a vote. Proposed introduction number 1412A, sponsored by Councilmember Robert Holden, would provide that the police department tow trucks may remove unattended vehicles that are obstructing a sidewalk, crosswalk, fire hydrant, bicycle lane, or bus lane if the vehicle poses a threat to safety or would inhibit the safe and expeditious passage of MTA buses. This bill would also require the police department to issue a report in January of 2021 that includes for each month in 2020, the number of vehicles towed disaggregated by police precinct. And I wanna thank James DiGiovanni from the staff for his work on that bill. Second, we have a piece of housing and buildings legislation by our housing and buildings committee chair, Chair Cornegie, introduction number 1481A, which would amend the administrative code of the city of New York and the New York City plumbing code in relation to bringing such code up to date with the 2015 edition of the International Plumbing 
zoning code with differences that reflect the unique character of the city and it repeals chapter 11 and appendices C, F, and G of the New York City Plumbing Code in relation thereto. I wanna thank uh, Jean and Zilka for her work on that bill. Next, we have two governmental operations bills up for a vote. They are both by our governmental operations chair, Fernando Cabrera. Introduction number 1095 would increase transparency within the New York City Board of Standards and Appeals and ensure temporary special permits don't go on indefinitely. The bill does the following. It requires the BSA to notify building owners when a special permit is about to expire. Such notification must go out six months before the special permit expires. And because use of such property after the special permit's expiration may be in violation of the building certificate of occupancy, the BSA's notification must inform the owner that a special permit may not be extended until any penalties for such violation are paid. And lastly, it requires such notification be sent to the community board in which the property is located. This bill builds on Local Law 84 of 2017, which required the BSA to provide similar notification when a variance to the zoning resolution is about to expire. Next, introduction 1249B, again by Chair Cabrera, would eliminate the critical driver program, a redundant and confusing New York City Taxi and Limousine Commission program that operated in the same manner as a different program, the Persistent Violator Program. The only non-duplicative element of the critical driver program is that it allows drivers to reduce accumulated license points through DMV accident prevention courses. The Persistent Violator Program lets drivers reduce points through TLC accident prevention courses. This bill would consolidate the points reduction elements into one program, the Persistent Violator Program, allowing drivers to reduce accumulated points through DMV and TLC prevention courses. These programs were separate until Local Law 30 of 2014 as an element of the Mayor's Vision Zero Action Plan, and it included both TLC and DMV issued points under the Persistent Violator Program. However, according to the Taxi and Limousine Commission, this caused confusion for drivers, many of whom thought they were being penalized twice for the same violation, and I want to thank the staff that worked on this, Daniel Collins, Elizabeth Cronk, and Emily Forgione. Finally, the Council will be voting on a critical piece of legislation aimed at reducing the number of bird deaths throughout our city. Annually, it's estimated that between 90,000 and 230,000 birds are killed annually throughout New York City as a result of building collisions. This number is so high because they're unable to detect and avoid glass, as well as artificial night lighting uh, that confounds night migrating species. This council has done a lot this year to protect animals, and I'm really proud that this bill continues that work. A lot of these bird deaths are totally avoidable, and it's incumbent upon us to do what we can to protect these animals from dying unnecessarily. And introduction number 1482B, sponsored by Councilmember Rafael Espinal, would require 90% of the building envelope for the first 75 feet of any new building or any building that's proposed to undergo major alterations to be constructed of bird-friendly materials that meet a specified design standard that's intended to decrease bird strikes. This bill would also require the installation of these bird-friendly materials where an exterior wall envelope is adjacent to a green roof system uh, or on such installations that create hazards for birds, such as glass awnings, handrails, windbreak panels, acoustic barriers, and parallel glass panels. This law would, not, would take effect one year after it becomes uh, law and would not apply to applications to construction document approval filed before such effective date. And I also want to thank uh, Jean and Zilka for her work on this. That concludes today's agenda. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you. We will now move into discussion of general orders. We have no one on the docket today to speak on general orders, and so we will now move right into um, seeing none. We'll now have report of special committees. None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Governmental Operations, Intro 1095, Expiration of Variances. 
Coupled on general orders. Intro 1249B, critical driver program. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Housing and Buildings, Intro 1481A, plumbing code. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1482B, bird friendly materials. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU 564 through LU 567. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Section 197D of the New York City Charter. <clears throat> LU 572 and Reso 1187 through LU 575 and Reso 1190, 515 Blake Avenue. Coupled on general orders. LU 580 and Reso 1191, Sidewalk Cafe. Coupled on general orders. LU 581, Zoning Amendment. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Section 197D of the New York City Charter. LU 591 and Reso 1192, Sidewalk Cafe. Coupled to general orders. Report of the Committee on Transportation, Intro 1412A, removing unattended vehicles. Amended and coupled on general orders. On the general order calendar, LU 561 and Reso 1193 through LU 562 and Reso 1194, 101 Fleet Place. Coupled to general orders. Resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of D. Coupled to general orders, and at this time, I'm asking for a roll call vote on all of the items on today's general order calendar. Powers. Aye. Torres. Aye. Adams. Ampri Samuel. Ayala. Aye. Barron. Borelli. <coughs> I'm sorry, we're voting on all general, general items? Okay, Everything I, on the calendar. I on all except for intro uh, 1482. Brennan. Aye. Cabrera. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. I'll make it really quick. Uh, the speaker did a fantastic job of explaining all the bills, but I just wanted to thank the Government Operations Committee, staff Daniel Collins, Emily Forjohn, Elizabeth Cronk, Sebastian Bacci, and Elliot Lynn, as well as Malin Legislative Director Claire McLevain for their fantastic work that they did in these two bills. And with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Chin. Aye. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. Aye. Cornegie. Aye. Deutsch. Aye. Diaz. Si en todo. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Uh, permission to speak my vote? Permission granted. I just want to give a big thank you to the speaker on supporting 1482B, uh, the bird friendly glass bill, and the staff for getting this done so quickly. <laughs> Uh, this is a bill uh, that uh, I worked introducing uh, in the past year. Not think Quiet move so in the chamber. They not think it'll move. <clears throat> they not think it'll move so fast, but because uh, of of this body and, and the speaker uh, and and their concerns over uh, our city's wildlife and our environment, uh, we were get this done. As you know, as was mentioned, uh, in New York City, we have between 90,000 to 230,000 birds that collide within our buildings, and this bird-friendly glass will lower that number by 90% uh, and make sure that we're a leader in the conversation around our, our globe's biodiversity. So thank you all, and I vote aye and all. Thank you. Eugene. I vote aye and all. Gibson. I vote aye. Jonai. Aye and all. Gordinchik. Aye. Holden. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. I vote aye and all, and I want to thank the speaker for advancing intro uh, 1412A, which will make our streets uh, much safer uh, as part of the placard, or, uh, placard abuse uh, package. And uh, I want to thank Jason Goldman, Jeff Baker, James Giovanni, uh, my chief of staff, Dan Krizina, and communication director, Ryan Kelly, who worked on it. And certainly, uh, much thanks to Transpor the Transportation Committee and Chair Udanis Rodriguez for supporting it. Uh, and, and again, I think uh, making our streets safer should be the number one priority of any towing from the NYPD. And this package uh, of bills by the speaker and certainly with the support uh, of the Transportation Committee will just, will do just that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Kalos. Aye and all. King. Ku. Aye and all. Kozlowitz. Aye. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. Aye. Levin. Aye. Levine. Aye. Lewis. Aye. Mizell. Yes. Menchaca. Aye. Miller. Boy, I hate to break up that rhythm. Um, permission to explain my vote? 
Permission granted. Thank you. I, I simply, I'm going to vote aye on all, and, 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 I, and I really want to uh, commend Councilmember Barron, who is not here, but on her tireless and relentless uh, work on, on behalf of homeless families, not just in her community, throughout the city on this Blake Avenue project is a, a landmark project and a, a template for how we service the homeless in our, in our city. So with that, I'll be voting aye on all. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you. Moya. Perkins. Aye on all. Reynoso. Aye. Richards. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rose. Rosenthal. Aye. Salamanca. Aye. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. Valone. Aye, and a special thank you to our speaker, Corey, and all the council to make today so special for my dad and our family. Uh, he doesn't get surprised often, but he really was today, and I think I may have saw a tear in his eye. So uh, thank you, everyone, and I and all. And if anyone's not here at the next meeting, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays to all. Van Bramer. I and all. Jaeger. I on all, with the exception of 1482, in which I vote no, and uh, 1412, in which I abstain. Thank you. Thank you. Matteo. No on 1482, I and the rest. Combo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye on all. Thank you. All items on today's general order calendar are adopted by a vote of 44 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions. With the exception of intro 1482B, which was adopted by a vote of 41 affirmative, three negative, and zero abstentions. And intro 1412A, which was adopted by a vote of 43 in the affirmative, zero negative, and one abstention. We'll now go into the introduction and reading of bills. All bills have been referred to committees as indicated on today's agenda. Thank you. There aren't any resolutions on today's calendar, so we will now move into general discussion. No one signed up. Oh, wow. Oh, no, 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 no. Before we start the celebrations. When no one signs up, you say no one signed up, and then we end the meeting. I did see, I missed her, but I did see Council Member Vanessa Gibson, who had been raising her hand. I couldn't see her through okay, you. Okay, so let's go. <laughs> Council Member Gibson. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader, and good afternoon to all of my colleagues and our speaker. I want to congratulate all of our colleagues that passed important legislation today. And I come before all of you in a very emotional and somber moment. Um, for the past seven years, I've had the honor and privilege of working with a young lady who started out as an intern in my office back in 2012 from CUNY. And what I didn't realize is she would ultimately become family. And during my time as a member of the New York State Assembly for four years to now serving in the council here for the past six years, this young lady has stood at my side. She started out as an intern and worked her way through the ranks and ultimately for the past few years has been proudly serving as my chief of staff. And over the next several weeks as we enter a new year, she is going to transition into a new position um, moving into the private sector. And so since this is one of the last stated in which uh, she will be with us on behalf of my staff, I just wanted to say thank you so much for your incredible commitment to my outgoing chief of staff, Wendy Gallegos, um, who has been with me through thick and thin, through good and bad, every headache, stomach ache in the world. And she has never given up on the work that we do every day on behalf of our constituents in the Bronx. I am so very proud of her. I have watched her grow. 
um, as she graduated from college and she pursued her graduate degree, and I've always encouraged her. And I say to all of my staff, you should always be better as you leave than the way that you came, because that means we've done our job. It means we've elevated our young people to be the next generation of leaders. And so I say to my staff, Wendy, job well done. And on behalf of our family, I just want to present her with these beautiful flowers. You give people flowers while they can still smell them. And I just want to say thank you, Wendy, for all of your work. Congratulations to you, and may God bless you and keep you in your future endeavors. Okay, Councilmember Borelli, and finally with Councilmember Yeager. All right, Staten Island has yielded their time. Councilmember Yeager. Uh, now the, uh, the pressure's really on because I like to stand with Staten Island. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I just uh, very briefly uh, wish to add my voice to those in this chamber and uh, those in our family of New Yorkers who have spoken in the last couple of days about the passing of Jay Kriegel. Um, he was uh, a friend to many. Um, a mentor to uh, young people in politics and some of us who are not so young anymore. Uh, he grew up in my district, and so whenever we, uh, we got together for breakfast, for kosher breakfast on Avenue J, uh, he would tell me what used to be at this store and what used to be at that store and what, what was there and what was there, and he would talk about his block and uh, the neighborhood and how it had changed and how he still loved it anyway and loved to come back. Uh, he was incredible. Um, his work in uh, creating the uh, Lindsay Fellows at CUNY, which has benefited a number of members of this body, including Mr. Speaker and, and some of my colleagues uh, who have joined in this term, uh, is growing us, I think is fair to say, uh, to be better uh, legislators and better New Yorkers. And I think we're all grateful for Jay's work. And with that, Madam President, thank you for your time. Thank you. And Council Member Deutsch. Thank you, Majority, Majority Leader, for, for remembering me. Thank you. Permission to uh, um, give it, um, I have an intro I'd like to uh, speak about. Please. Thank you. So I'm pleased uh, to be introducing intro 1818 today, a bill that will require the city to install protective ballads at all bus stops across the five boroughs. In the Jewish religion, the number 18 stands for Chai, which translates to life. This bill is fittingly numbered 1818 Life because it will indeed uh, save lives. On September 10th of this year, 10-year-old Enzo Ferraccio was waiting for a bus on Ocean Avenue and Avenue L. Enzo had just been dismissed from his sixth grade class at Huddy Junior High School, and he was looking forward to catching the bus to get home and see his mom, his dad, his big brother, and their dog. Surveillance, surveillance video shows that Enzo was looking down at his phone and did not see the out-of-control SUV that crossed the intersection, jumped the curb, and crashed into him, taking his young life in an instant. Enzo's life was cut short in a tragedy that could have been prevented. At their home that night, Enzo's parents expressed their desire to turn their pain into purpose and make our streets safe for, pedestrian, for pedestrians so that no family would have to go through a similar circumstance. Intro 1818 will implement an important layer of protection for New Yorkers who utilize city buses. Curb jumping is extremely common and the danger rises when a vehicle curb jumps at a bus stop. Where people are gathered, ballads will combat that risk and help protect our city's commuters. I ask all my colleagues to please sign on on intro 1818. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Deutsch. And as the first African-American woman um, selected to be the majority leader of the city council, I could not let today go without recognizing the brilliance and beauty of Miss Universe, who is from South Africa. And I just want to celebrate Zozabini Tunzi as being elected, um, selected, and winning the 
international uh, competition. This is a historic day, historic day for black women all over the world. I also want to recognize uh, Miss America, Nia Imani Franklin, Miss Teen USA, Kalia Garris, and Miss USA, uh, Miss Chelsea Chris. And this is such a remarkable day um, for African American women who have been told for centuries that they were not beautiful. And so this is such a proud and historic time to see four African American women holding these titles all across the universe. And we couldn't be more proud. And we celebrate them. And we applaud them. And I think as black women, we all feel that much more beautiful today as a result of this wonderful and amazing accomplishment. Thank you. And now we will have this meeting closed out by Speaker Corey Johnson. I want to give uh, my thoughts and prayers to the family and the child who was killed yesterday in East Harlem, the three-year-old boy, a three-year-old child, I don't know if it was a boy, the three-year-old child is a boy who was killed in a crosswalk, uh, and we're holding that family and that uh, young lost life in our hearts. And with that, the stated meeting of December 10, 2019 is hereby adjourned. Thank you, Speaker Johnson. Can you please hold for one minute? This meeting is not adjourned as of yet. If you could just hold for one moment. We've been joined by two council members. Council, council Member Adams. Present. I vote aye on all. Council Member Moya. Aye on all. Thank you, and we will now retally the vote. Thank you. All items, give us one moment. Give us one moment. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you for your patience. In order for us to allow, excuse me, quiet in the chamber. In order for us to allow the two additional council members that have just entered the chamber, we need unanimous consent. For us to allow the two additional council members to vote, similar to a resolution, all in favor of allowing our members to vote, say aye. aye. Any abstentions? Any nays? Okay, by unanimous consent, we will allow both council members to vote. We will call the roll again for the two members, and then we will close this meeting. Council Member Adams. I vote aye on all. Council Member Moya. All items on today's general order calendar are adopted by a vote of 46 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions, with the exception of intro 1482B, which was adopted by a vote of 43 in the affirmative, three negative, and zero abstentions, and intro 1412A, which was adopted by a vote of 45 in the affirmative, zero negative, and one abstention. At this time, today's council meeting um, is adjourned. We will now have the meeting closed by Councilmember Corey Johnson. The stated meeting of December 10th, 2019 is hereby adjourned. Thank you.